It is officially stats and award season in our Anchorage Bison's 32-team relocation fantasy draft franchise, and we need to see if we want anything as we have guys like Joe Morant kind of cook up, and, you know, Jadarius Lewis sat for a little bit, played, then sat again because he got injured, and then he sat again, but I believe the man is going to be back for the playoffs, which, I mean, we might as well go in and look at that real quick. Obviously, a playoff berth in year two is a, I'm not saying it's surprising, but it's definitely, I would say, ahead of schedule, which, in theory, if we don't do damage, is behind schedule because we hurt our draft pick. But at the end of the day, you cannot throw away a playoff berth. There's just no way. I don't care how ready you feel like you are. This is the uh, recap on the season. We had no like restarts or anything like that, which even if there was, it wouldn't really mean anything. Sometimes I need to uh, change something that I don't notice, and I'm like, oh, oh, crap. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, like we had a lower quarter length early on in the year, what, like eight minute quarters or something like that. But either way, let us take a look at the stats and awards. I don't really know how we kind of finished with some of these players. Like Rodriguez, I know is over a thousand, but how much over a thousand? I don't know. Look at the touchdown to pick rate uh, ratio. You can see that uh, both quarterbacks finishing similarly, right? Touchdowns wise, yards wise, and then completion percentage wise. But Lewis, whether it be luck, whether it be skill, decision making, whatever, does have a better touch on a pick ratio and a slightly better passer rating and yards per game because of that. Yards per game could also be uh, him being a backup, Cunningham holding the ball for the special teams. I'm not sure exactly, but looking at downs played, it was very similar. I mean, you look at the downs played were very close, and in general, the numbers, like I said, very close across the board. But as a team, almost 5,000 passing yards and 42 touchdowns. Um, honestly, only 22 interceptions. I mean, that is that is a season probably good enough for a dev up if, you know, they only had, you know, it was one of them. Um, Lewis could still win Rookie of the Year. Probably not, though. If anything, I would say Morant has a better chance, who is obviously on our team. Rushing-wise, no double-digit touchdowns. That is a sad, sad thing to see. But 1,500 yards may be good enough for a dev up. Beatty, about 500 yards. Not bad. I kind of want to see... How that compares to last year? Oh, way less. Way less. But in fairness, Beatty might have even started as the starter last year. I can't remember. But very good season, though, for the running backs. Over, you know, 2,000 total. And, you know, touchdowns are a little low at, what, 17? Still, fumbles. A lot of fumbles for the quarterbacks. But overall, three for the running backs. That's not that bad. Uh, yards after contact for 30. Broken tackles, 33. Receiving Moran, I'm hoping for about 13, 1400. 13 on the nose. We'll take that. 13 yards with 12 touchdowns. Shorter, 938 with six for a guy that's on the slower side. Not the best at getting open. Not bad. Koontz, a little bit of a down year for him. But Ronnie Bell, that's really, in my opinion, the biggest surprise. Thought, you know, the slot position kind of, you know, disappeared for a while there. And yet, almost 900 yards. I don't know who will get a dev up here besides Morant. Rant's like guaranteed to get Deva. Might even go straight to Superstar. But maybe shorter, maybe Bell. I highly doubt it, though. They needed to get either over 1,000 yards or double-digit touchdowns. Neither got either. Uh, looking at the rack, shorter, not actually half bad, you know, considering how slow he is. And then Morant's, you know, considering a lot of those drags, you know, went for an extra 10, 15. A little surprised it wasn't a little higher for him. Uh, the longest on the season was Booty with 79 yarder. Uh, Moran at 78 and then shorter 43 goes down even more because obviously the uh, the speed drops off quite a bit looking at the blocking who was terrible who was terrible so uh, Freeland did not do the best center a lot of sacks allowed but I gotta say Barber really good only three sacks allowed defensively 130 tackles for Jones is that good enough especially with the sacks for X factor maybe really good tackles for a loss as well Hicks a lot more tackles than I would have thought because usually these safeties are just getting torched in the secondary uh, by the running backs. Uh, looking at the tackles for a loss in general, any DT stuff. Shelton, six sacks, you know, for a moment. He was looking like a really good player, but that moment was like kind of middle of the season, so it kind of came on a little late. Sacks in general, though. I mean, really not a lot of base pressure. I mean, Jackson, the rookie, was very mid. Three sacks allowed, or not allowed, but taken Finesse player is usually the better of the two, and uh, Malone kind of proven that with four, which is saying something because he is a way worse player at his respective style than Jackson, yet still had one more sack. 
Uh, Ryan Lamas with six picks is not bad, but a lot of those came in the second half. Literally the last couple of weeks, probably three or four in the last four weeks alone. Forbes, four interceptions. Nick Jones, four. You know, a lot of these guys didn't even start on the season, right? I think it was... Uh, uh, Damari Mathis as the number two for a while, and then we kind of switched over. Cam Jones at three, Weatherford with three, three for Hicks, three for Connor Wilson, one for Hayes, and one for Mathis. What about the force fumbles? Two for Cam Jones, a bunch for these other guys. Not really a bunch, but a lot of recoveries for uh, Hicks. I'm not really sure how he got so lucky, but he did. Touchdowns for Hicks, Jackson, and Moss. Kicking, Chad Ryland was the GOAT this year, and with 36 for 36... With a long of 62, if he misses kicker of the year because of this extra point, I will force his dev. This is a dev forcing that deserves it. Turk, a lot of pin type punts rather than like really good, you know, booming kicks and, you know, uh, touchback type plays. But Forbes, one kicker turn, touchdown, nothing else going. And that's the numbers for us, which, I mean, we're still a team developing. We made the playoffs. Got a couple of dev ups in there, most likely. That's that's all you could really ask for. Looking at the league, though. Tua with almost 5,000 yards, 36 touchdowns. Brock Purdy, 47 98. 47 for Lamar, 43 for Mac, 42 for Aaron, uh, 41 for Trevor Lawrence. Gardner Minshew with 41. Hertz with uh, about 4,000. Uh, Kenny Pickett. The one thing I'm noticing, though, is the touchdowns. Kind of low. Kind of low. Stafford was kind of bad. Geno is pretty bad. Bryce was terrible. Watson was really bad. Uh, Derek Carr was okay. Justin Fields, low yards, but great touchdown to picks. Well, great touchdowns, I suppose, 29. And then Jadarius Lewis and Cunningham right at the bottom. But, I mean, there's a lot of picks thrown. I gotta say, a lot of picks. Lamar Jackson might have won MVP to uh, maybe wins MVP over him. I don't know. Passer rating usually gives you a pretty good indicator, so maybe it's Joe Burrow, but I think the touchdown's a little low, so if I had to be a betting man here, it would definitely be Lamar Jackson, I'd imagine. But let's move on to the running backs. Jonathan Taylor, Christian McCaffrey, both at 1,800+. plus. Christian McCaffrey, not so many touchdowns. Taylor with 17, unless Brees Hall stole it. I would imagine Taylor was running back of the year. Rodriguez, though, number four for running back. Touchdowns are going to lower him on the list a little bit, but a lot of guys... Over a thousand rushing yards. I mean, like half the league starters, really. Like, how many players is that? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. There was only four starters, I would imagine, because I doubt it was, you know, two one thousand yard rushers on the same team that didn't get to a thousand touchdowns. Brees Hall with twenty three, A chain with twenty one. So it seems like the faster you are, the more touchdowns you have based on these numbers. Yards per carry, was it actually Rodriguez that led the league? It technically was. Uh, Beatty, if you want to count him. But Rodriguez with 6.1 on 259 carries. The next highest was at 5.9 with Taylor. But you look at the uh, the volume, you can argue that he was better than our guy. Uh, Rodriguez, 92.3 yards per uh, game, which eh, is not the best. Fumbles, do we really want to know? Probably not. Mixon, 72 broken tackles. Ramondre Stevenson at 68. A little surprised to see his name up there. But yeah, usually kind of guys that are truckier that are that are higher on this list. Uh, yards after contact. Rodriguez leading the league by 38 yards on that category. Not bad. Christian McCaffrey with the longest run of the season of 85. Then we move on to receiving the number one receiver based on yards. is Jamar Chase with uh, 1,600 yards, and then Tyreek at 1,550. Then it drops off quite a bit at 13, six, you know, 50. Morant also at number four, so two number fours in the league uh, at their respective positions for yards. That's not bad. Uh, some pretty good stuff here, you know. It seems like about the same or less receivers had 1,000 as running backs did, which is kind of saying something because it's a pass first league. I know you spread the ball around a lot, but still, as far as wide receivers go or receivers go, uh, I'm surprised to see Cole Komet that high up there. But five guys with over or 100 or higher catches because two of them had 100 on the nose. Uh, so there's a lot of catches there. Yards per reception, A.J. Brown with 18.6, way up on the top of the list. Morant, number two, several points below that. Keenan, Surprise him and Wicks and some of these other slower guys are actually pretty high up there. Yards per game, Jamar, almost 100. Uh, Keenan Allen, touchdowns, 18. 18 touchdowns at his old age. Wicks with the most yards after the catch. 
And then the longest on the year was Wix as well. 86. Man, Wix really cooked. What's his dev? Normal dev. Okay, that's pretty disappointing. Sacks. Who allowed the most sacks? It was Cameron Fleming. And then as far as like the least amount of sacks allowed, kind of Ezra. You know, 990 yard, um, not yards. Gain, downs played and zero sacks allowed. Uh, next would probably be like Kappa and uh, David Bakhtiari because he's a tackle, I suppose. Uh, and he had, you know, the snaps to go with it. But uh, we'll move on to the defensive side of things now. Tackles wise, uh, Cam Jones is actually up there. 130. It's in the top 10. Tackles for a loss. Uh, Cam Jones number three. Sack totals. We're not going to see the light of day on this one. But uh, you can see the Shamrocks cooking up with Von Miller and Max Crosby. Just just unbelievable duo. They're just impossible to stop. Some pretty decent numbers in there. But uh, thought maybe someone had got to 20. But nope. Cody Barton, five interceptions. Holcomb with five. You know, pretty tame league year for interception counts. Uh, and then we'll just move on straight to kickers. Number one kicker, Rylan. And then, you know, there's a couple of other 100 percenters, but if they win it, they don't, I mean, they don't deserve it. Let's be real here. He's got double anyone's kicks, pretty much. Uh, at least anyone that had 100%. Longest kick of the year was his at 62 as well. Uh, let's take a look at punters. Average, best average was Camarda. Not a whole lot of guys over 50. There's a few, but not many. Kick returns. Only Forbes, power turns, McCaffrey is the only guy. Looking at the player of the week real quick, uh, Mosley wins one. Great, love to see that because we have to play them. Farley, Mahomes, and Lamar Jackson. Some pretty big names in there, at least on offense. Yearly awards, MVP goes to Tua, Lamar at number two. I could easily see that. I could have seen it go the other way even, but uh, it did not. Of course, we'll take a look at our side. Doesn't really matter too much for the awards on the other side, I guess. Marantho, Offensive Player of the Year, number seven. No rookie was even close to him on this list defensive player of the year goes to cam jones okay i mean he had a great year in fairness you know some good interceptions a ton of tackles for a loss nine and a half sacks a bunch of tackles in general he absolutely cooked deserving of defensive player of the year in my opinion especially since it's a non uh, pass rusher uh offense rookie of the year of course no shocker here goes to joe morant number two is Jadarius lewis not really a shocker there either defensive rookie of the year goes to forbes he did have a couple of interceptions and played a lot of snaps for us looking at the numbers though the names kind of a weak group of uh rookies anyways best quarterback definitely not on the list right? oh number 10 look at Jadarius slipping on the list we don't mind that at all and then rodriguez because of touchdown lacking all the way down at number seven. Receivers number two for Morant should go to Superstar. Won an award and had a really good season. That's that's all it takes. At least Star, obviously, but hopefully Superstar. Runyon goes to Star Dev. Interesting. Uh, any other awards for us? No, not on this list. Not on the D-line list. Linebacker should win it. Cam Jones does. Also, um, Weatherford at 10. Nice to see a, another representative. Steven Nelson, DP of the year, when Riley Moss and Forbes and Hicks were all there. Wilson as well. We got some DBs. We got some cookage. Picks really just, I mean, there you go, Chad Rylan. Uh, picks, they really just bump you up the list. But let's take a look at the team stats now. First for offensive, and then 32nd for D. Points, number one. What about points allowed? 32nd? 32nd. So we're a good offense, okay? Let, that's that's where we leave it. We are a good offense, and we're going to dip into this a little bit. I think we'll do the first of many. We'll do the weak link, and then if we have any upgrades, which I don't know if we do, we'll do those. Ah, should I? Nah, we're going to leave it because I don't want to I don't want to go into, like, the weekly strategy and all that stuff when, uh, you know, I have to look at the team and all that, but... That's basically it. You know, got ourselves some guaranteed dev ups. I'm going to take a quick glance at what we got and say, uh, you know, what we think is our chance for dev ups. So, Moran should be a superstar. Jadarius, I don't think he's going to do enough. Shorter, maybe. Bell, maybe. Rodriguez, maybe. No one else. Then defensively, Cam Jones, probably. Walt Jones, maybe. Weatherford, possibly. Hicks, I would say yes. Wilson, perhaps. Riley Moss, yes. Forbes, possibly, actually. And I don't think we've done enough for anyone else. And then Chad Ryland, of course, goes to the star. That is going to be it, though, for the stats and awards. Not the longest. You know what? We are going to go into this. It's not the longest in the world. Let's let's actually get some value in here. Let's do some of these uh, scenarios. So, now uh, you find yourself in the playoffs despite fielding a defensive unit. No, we're not near the bottom of the league in rankings. We are the 
bottom in the league. Create pressure. I mean, you always want to create pressure, but that is the, the thing that needs to exist. Three sacks plus on defense and then beat the Thunderbirds at this point. You just want to beat them, right? It's the playoffs. More than ever, do you need to just win? Then the first of many for the playoffs, obviously. Hopefully the first of many. I'm going to play it cool. I can't guarantee a win because I can't even guarantee we'll show up to the game. We'll probably miss it by half an hour or something. What actually happens in that case? Obviously, they always show up like super early, but imagine there's like traffic. I don't know how they do. They have like a, a police escort. No one ever talks about these things. No one ever does. Then I don't want to spoil the team, uh, you know, what they have. You'll see a few of them here. They have a really elite looking offense and then a defense that looks good enough to win, but definitely some aging pieces. So this is like kind of their window, if you will. Uh, we know Kenneth had some really good numbers, so we're going to try to stop the run. And then as far as attacking them goes, uh, they had some okay DBs with Marlon Humphrey and Marcus Peters and their safeties are okay, but I don't know what I want to do. I guess we're going to... It's going to be a run game. Let's just make it a run game. And then we'll have all these. Maybe we'll get some dev ups, perhaps. But I'm not saying Malik Cunningham is done for. But there's a good chance that he never sees the light of day again. But we're still going to go with these, just in case. Give him a chance at a dev up. And I kind of lie. Out of, uh, like, franchise mode here, realism, whenever you want to talk about it. Uh, I kind of miss doing a, a wide receiver career mode. I wish they would actually, like, make the career modes not crap. Because it is fun just running routes. Like, you see, like, burning them off the line. Like, look at that. Like, that's just beautiful. Like, what do you do there? And, like, give, and if he wins, I like giving him a little shimmy. I mean, that's about the best coverage you're going to get from a DB. And, you know, he still gets smoked. Get a little spin move. We're going deep. Got enough time. That ball is taking a while to get there. Not going to land in the zone. But, I mean, it's just... I mean, look at the, the moves. Like, you can't cover that. Like, that's just so sloppy, but it works. Like we talked about with those upgrades, we should have a few, and we do Smoke Monday. I haven't heard that name in a while. You know, it's Hicks hasn't been great, but he has definitely played better than when Monday last played, and they're both slow as hell. Monday's taller, but Hicks just never really looked back. And then Wanya Morris, he's not a bad player either, but Barber has never looked back either. Definitely need to replace a few linemen on this team, though. Right tackle, potentially center. Uh, wide receivers here, not bad. We might have to replace some of these guys, too. As much as I liked Shorter, I liked Ronnie Bell. Nobody on this team other than, like, really Morant and Rodriguez are, like, fully safe. Cam Jones, Rodriguez, and Morant are, like, the only... Oh, nice two to jump in. The only, like, guaranteed, at worst, top two on the roster players. You know, Cordell, Cordell Jackson, Ronnie Shelton, they have potential... But, you know, they were pretty bad. So if we find someone in uh, the draft that's got potential and they play better in free agents uh, preseason, I mean, there is no guarantees anywhere. I'm just saying. But Morant, obviously. Uh, Koontz, I suppose. Cam Jones. Rodriguez. Those guys are going to guarantee themselves starting spots. But, you know, there's been a lot of question marks on this team. Despite the fact that we did do well and we made the playoffs, a lot of question marks on this team. Don't want to get too into it because, you know, we're still in the... We're still in the battle. The battle is not done yet, as we have the Thunderbirds right across from us here at home, though. And we're uh, going to see if we can actually win a playoff game, perhaps. If you guys enjoyed this little uh, Stats and Awards video, and you've enjoyed the series so far, the season specifically, maybe leave a like, subscribe if you're new. If you're not new, I appreciate your continued support on the channel. Maybe follow me on Twitter, John PK, second channel, PK plays for non-matic content. The next episode you see from this franchise, or this... Uh, what is it called? Um, yeah, the series will be a little bit later today. We'll have the first playoff game against those Thunderbirds. And obviously, if we win, we'll probably have another one on, I would say, Monday. Because it'll be a rebuild on Sunday. But uh, Bears franchise next, then Bison. So keep an eye out. Keep a lookout. And that's about it. Let me know what you guys think is going to happen in the comment section below. And hope you guys come back for the next video. But until next video, see